No tank today from you. Uh, uh, Unless the team needs it. They're, they're going to have to like raise my salary quite a bit for me to, for me to play some Sion on stage. Hey Darius! I swear to God, if you talk to me again before I have my morning coffee... Dude, dude, calm down, man, calm down! Put an effect awake for a perfect dose of caffeine. Hello everyone, this is Darius from The Short Caller, joined here by Dan Dan after his first LEC game. Of course, a loss against Splice, unfortunate in that regard, um, but what did you make of your first game on stage? Um, well, I was actually not nervous at all. I was quite comfortable. Uh, yeah, I mean, I actually thought we were going to win. Um, I actually think if we, uh, if that Silas uh, chain hit mm -hmm. on, on the Baron, if it hit Akali, I think we would have actually won the game because we would have gotten Nash and then we just you know, just group five mid, run it down, and then the game is over. But uh, actually, not too unhappy with our performance. I mean, a loss is a loss, you know, and a win is a win. It doesn't matter how, we, but uh, yeah, the way in which we lost is actually um, quite uplifting, I would say. Fair. So yeah, not uh, too sad about that one. Right, so run me through a bit about the, the process uh, from your perspective of, you know, getting uh, recruited to the, to the main roster now with the entire academy team getting subbed in for the main one. When were you notified? What was your immediate reaction? Um, how did you prepare for LEC? I mean, we're preparing for seven months now because we were, um, I, I mean, most of our squad was acquired in January. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it became kind of a reality when we won at U Masters because we, we were like, okay, we're... Um, like one one of the better national league teams, you know. And then we saw Kira getting uh, um, put into ADC. We saw Leader getting put into LEC. So then we thought, yeah, okay, you know, one of these days, if the main team doesn't uh, perform to standards, then they're gonna have to do something, you know. So we were notified somewhere last week. I'm not sure if I can say this, but I'm just gonna <laughs> say it. I'm just gonna say it anyway. So it was, uh, somewhere last week, but uh, we had the thought in the back of our minds for quite a while now. Okay, so and you were confident that you would be be subbed in sometime soon. I mean, it's it's hard to to see someone like Soas, you know, being in the yeah. top line spot and then going like, hey, can I really be subbed in? I mean, it's definitely not about individual player right. skill, you know, because you look at all these names, you look at me, you know, I'm like a complete random, you know, and then you look at Soas, man, this guy's been to world championships, you know, he's won like uh, splits and stuff. So yeah, it, if you look at both, it's like, oh, who is this guy? Why Soas not playing? You know, but it's just. Um, Synergy wise, when we, uh, yeah, we just fit better together, you know, like we just have better results in scrims, better, re uh, and better results just playing together. Cause every time that the team was like split up, there's just different opinions. Um, and these like veterans have got stronger opinions as well. So it's, di it's difficult when you have a lot of strong opinions in a team with us, it's more like, okay, you have like a few people with, with strong opinions, but everyone even though you have these strong opinions, they mesh really well together. So it's just a cohesive uh, group of five, you know? Right. So I, I said this on stream as well. I, I find the position the, that the academy team effectively was put into is a very unlucky one because um, I can definitely see this team uh, making a playoffs run if the score is 0-0 zero and, zero and you get to a play from the start. But now you, you get subbed in at a 2-6 score line. You have to win, you know, I think it was seven out of eight games. Now you lost again to Spice. So it's it's kind of getting really difficult now for, for the playoffs run. Uh, are you still confident that um, the academy team can showcase uh, their true skill and maybe even still breach for for the top six slots i mean for us the only way we lose is if we don't try enough you know um for, because we just went into this with a with a blank slate you know we, we said we're zero zero well okay zero yeah. one now <laughs> but uh b before the game we said we're zero zero it doesn't matter you know and actually with the playoff stand uh, with the standings of some teams you know, I think that we've had our first match behind us now. It was probably the you know hardest match for us to get into. I think um, seeing the matches we've got looking for, uh, we, we we have to look forward to. I mean, I don't think it's that unreachable. Okay, maybe may, may delusional, you know, but uh, the way I see us playing together in like practice and uh, in our office and like a more um, mm, natural space for us, you know, mm -hmm. then uh, if we can transition that into here, I think that. With some teams being like three and five and stuff, I think that we need to we can make sixth place. You know, and it's it's difficult, but for us, even if we don't make it, but we still showcase what we can do as players. I think it's a win for 
us individuals at least, you know, and then also went for misfits in the next split when I decide, okay, these players actually do have potential, you know? Right, and if like the roster stays together and everything, of that's course. of course um, the, the implied here, but yeah, the the, the, the potential then is uh, of course very great because the, the it needs to be showcased that you guys can perform on stage. Uh, overall, your own individual performance going up against, you know, someone like Vizitachi, but you played fairly well on the Gangplank. Um, anything we can look forward to from you in the top lane? I mean, I was a little bit uncomfortable at the start, you know, because GP is probably one of the most difficult champions to play. And then I was like, I just, just pick it, you know. Um, but yeah, I just basically was picking for comp. So I was like, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to scale, you know, I'm just going to play my game. Uh, looking forward, I don't know, maybe some Yasuo in the top lane. If I felt more comfortable, I would have said, yeah, yeah. Yasuo guys now would have been nice. But uh, yeah, just don't expect any thanks from me anytime soon. <laughs> no tank duty from you. Uh, I, Unless the team needs it. They're, they're gonna have to like raise my salary quite a bit for me to for me to play some Sion on stage. Ooh, ooh, no, no wet noodle fights, no Maokai, no. I mean, they're not really meta anyway, it, so it's not relevant for you. If like, you ask me, I don't think there's gonna be a tank meta again. Yeah, really. Yeah. Just because of the, the way that Riot has looked uh, at the game over the, or changed the game over the last like half year, year. Or? I mean, when was the last time you had a tank meta? Yeah. It was, I think, last year, somewhere around like summer. Mm. You had like Maokai, which was absolutely broken, and then you had like. Counters to Maokai, uh, yeah. sorry, Sion, I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, otherwise, I haven't really seen tanks on the top lane. Uh, so I think, unless they really buff everything, Aftershock, please don't buff Aftershock, please, no. But uh, yeah, unless they do something around those lines, I don't think we'll, we'll see a tank mat anyway. So do you have still a, a personal goal for you and the team that you are looking forward to, like going out of the, the spot with like a positive scoreline for the academy team, for example, or uh, uh, yeah, just any goal? Just play our best, you know. That's that's the only thing we can uh, we can aim for at the moment. Find the best, uh, find our best playstyle, play it, and uh, yeah, just see what what we can do. You know, like have fun. Just uh, make sure to not waste this, not waste this opportunity. Right, and uh, lastly, of course, the chance to play in new masters and defend your title is now not going to be the thing. Like, do you already know what the situation is there? Because I feel like the community doesn't really know either. Well. Jesse, like mm. our coach, is now the two-star general, you know, because he's won two E-Masters, the most E-Masters uh, won so far up to this date by an individual. So kind of sad that we won't be able to defend that most likely. But uh, I mean, LEC is just more important, you know, even if we don't make it then for next year, if we, uh, yeah, if we just, even if we don't make the Make it this year, next year, if we just make it, then uh, yeah, the, it'll all be worth it in the end, you know? It'll all be worth it. Jesse as the two-star general, oh, I got the, all the means, all the means there. Yeah. One, once as a player, once as a coach as well, that's very special. Yeah, and you just want it like really free, you know? Like like both finals 3-0, I think. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, just uh, Jesse, all around great coach, you know? And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll get to showcase what he showed us uh, in the remaining four and a half weeks. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, one last thing: you get to go against um, the Rogue, potentially the Rogue Academy um, bot lane, or like the Rogue Academy roster, uh, or large parts of it tomorrow, with like the exception of Finn, basically. If if uh, I think Finn is playing. Uh, oh, Finn is playing tomorrow. Yeah, I think they put him in just because he's got like a a little grudge. Uh, uh, well, let's say last time he didn't play his best. You know, I think. I, I mean, it's fair to say you yeah. know he knows as well. You know, and. I like him as well, so there's no flame here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they just put him in because they were like, okay, just rematch, you know? Nice. And uh, I, I think they really, really deserve that rematch because they were by far the best team. Uh, um, at EU Masters? At, at EU Masters. So uh, now, yeah, tomorrow's going to be interesting, at least for us uh, as like rivals, I suppose. Yeah. I, I'm very excited for that one as well, for sure. Uh, lastly, anything you would like to say to the Misfits fans and a hashtag for all the people that watch until the end, of course. Yeah, so um, thanks to all the fans. I hope um, we, we won't disappoint for these next uh, four and a half weeks. Might take us a, yeah, might be a bumpy ride at the start, but I assure you that with our roster at the moment and with our synergy, we'll do quite well at, uh, at the end of the split. And yeah. Misfits win. <laughs> That's going to be the hashtag too. Hashtag Misfits win. Yeah, of course. Misfits win always. 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 Hashtag Misfits win for the people that watch until the end. As always, thank you so much, Dan, Dan for your time. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. This was Darius from The Shot Caller, and I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. We'd especially like to thank Christoph Buinovic, Thomas Göttel, Etienne, Erich Althaus, Lukas Legal, Lazy Raven, 
Lama Vyuta and Adam Novosviat for your very special support and of course also all the people whose names you see scrolling past you without you guys we would have closed down probably a while ago so thank you so much for your help thank you